Hello and welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Art of Programming Using Scala. We continue working through Chapter 2 um, and at, we've previously looked at the command line and various commands that you can use. In the most recent video we looked at how you can use input and output redirection to string commands together or to take information from files or put information into files. In this of lecture we're going to look at a the text editor that we're going to use so there are many different text editors out there uh, the editors that you use to write most of the time things like Microsoft Word are not actually text editors uh, if you were to take a dot doc file and look at it with less you would see that has a lot of stuff in it that is not basic text. It has things that are encoding what type of font it's using and what the margins are like and all other types of information that goes beyond just plain text. Programs need to be written in just plain text. At least that's the major programming interface that is that's in use today is just plain text files. And so you need to have a plain text editor. You can't nicely write programs in a, a word processor like um, Microsoft Word. If you are on a Windows machine, the default text editor that is present there is Notepad. Now, Notepad will work as a text editor, uh, but it's fairly bare bones and it's not really intended for the purposes of programming. Um, under Linux, there are quite a few different text editors uh, that you could use. The kind of two main ones that people would use for programming that are you know reasonably basic are VI and Emacs. I am going to work in VI this uh, in future uh, videos. Um, part of the reason for that is VI is a bit more uh, bare bones than than Emacs. It is by default installed on pretty much every Linux box anywhere, and it works very well over simple, uh, over slower internet connections. So VI just has a, a number of benefits. If you have to log on to a machine in a bare bones way, you can feel reasonably confident that you will have VI present and that you will be able to, to use it. So we're going to look at how you can use VI in this video so that you can now edit files instead of just being able to look at them with things like cat or more or less. So we'll go ahead and open our terminal, go into the main directory, and to run vi, you the command is vi, you can just run it as a standalone. And you'll notice here that when you run this, you actually get vim, the vi improved. You would get the same thing if you ran it as vim, most of the time, we're not going to uh, just run VI or Vim alone. We're going to give it an argument. And the argument that we're going to give it is the name of the file that we want to edit. Now, you can use an existing file. So, for example, previously we downloaded index.html. And when we look at that, you can see the HTML for, that was the Google page on the day that we downloaded that. You can also give it a file that does not exist, like test.txt. And when I run that, you can see that it shows you that we are in test.txt and it is a new file. Now, one of the things that differentiates VI from the from something like Notepad is VI has two very distinct modes in it. It has a command mode and then there's editing modes. Um, Notepad really only has the editing modes and you have some menus for for clicking around and selecting some options. Uh, VI, because of the separation of modes, you get some additional power. Uh, you can give it a number of different commands. Um, and it helps with programming. Okay? VI is a better editor for programming than, say, Notepad is. When you start off, you start in what's called command mode. Now, in command mode, you're not actually typing. If I were to hit keys right now, they would be giving it commands and not 
just having text appear. In order to have text appear, I need to be in an editing mode. And there are a few different commands that can take you into an editing mode. I'm going to start by hitting lowercase i. And you can see when I do that, that it changes and it says that now I am in insert mode. And so I can type something. Okay. I can hit enter and, and keep going. I can use the arrow keys to move around. By the way, if you go into a basic VI install, you will not be able to use the arrow keys while you are in insert mode. You will have to go back to command mode and use the arrow keys or possibly, depending upon the, the exact nature of the install, H, J, K, and L for, for navigation. So lowercase i puts you into insert mode and it inserts at the current cursor location. If instead of hitting lowercase i, I'd hit a capital I, that also puts you into insert mode, but it jumps to the beginning of the line and then starts doing insert. You can also use a lowercase a to append after the current character or the current location of the cursor capital A will append at the end of line. And there is also a capital R which puts you into a replace mode so that you overtype on things. Um, so if I come here and I type in capital R, you know, I can type over stuff. Uh, replace the text. Once I get to the end of the line, it's like I'm back in, in an insert mode. Some people, I've had students who will come into VI and they immediately hit lowercase i and they use the arrow keys and they use VI just like notepad, except the fact that you can't click on stuff. If you click on locations, it doesn't move the cursor. You can do that. However, you're losing out on a lot of the power of VI if you do that. It's really better that you learn some of the commands. And once again, your goal is not to memorize a whole bunch of commands. Turns out that Vim has so many commands, you can and people have written books on it. Okay, you can go out and learn all types of commands for, for Vim. It's up to you. I'm just going to present a, a small set of them, which happen to be very helpful for when you're doing programming. So these put you into these various modes. To get out of them, you hit escape. Uh, I should note that really I use lowercase i and capital A the vast majority of the time. I use capital A because often I want to jump to the end of a line and then go to the next line. Okay, um, That's what the capital A is, is useful for. Uh, occasionally I'll use lowercase a because I want to append after stuff and when you need to replace the capital R is helpful but most of the time I, I use the lowercase i and the capital A uh, but it's nice to know about the other ones. You'll, once again you'll remember you'll wind up internalizing the ones that you use the most instead of trying to memorize lots of them just use VI you'll look stuff up after you've used something enough you'll stop looking it up because you will remember it. So when you hit escape and you go back to command mode, and you can see down here, it's not telling me that I'm in insert mode or anything like that. I'm back in command mode. What types of commands do you have? Well, the lowercase x deletes a single character for you. If you hit dd, that deletes a line. Uh, if you hit yy, that yanks a line. And the yank is like a copy. Now at this point, it's worth pointing out the fact that, so I went back into insert mode and put sum on there. Any command that you do in VI can be preceded by a number. And if you do that, the command that you type in will be repeated that many times. So for example, instead of hitting X four times to delete the sum, I can hit four and X and it deletes and it takes out those four characters. If I want to delete you know, three lines, I can hit 3DD and they all go away. And it turns out that delete is actually like a, uh, a, a cut uh, for copy-paste and, and cut. The DD actually saves off those lines so that you can paste them 
someplace else. If I hit 3 and YY, you can even see here at the bottom it says that there were three lines yanked, and then I can go down and paste them. How did I paste them? Well, you can paste with either a lowercase p or a capital P. So let's put some of these in here. Uh, X, delete one character, DD, delete line, and actually, instead of saying delete, let's say cut line, because it is keeping a copy of it. Yank slash copy line, and you can uh, put numbers in front of these. Here's an interesting demonstration of that. If I go to this line, and before I hit I to insert, I type in 10. Okay, and then I hit I and say, uh, hello there, escape or if I hit a period, I'm going to hit enter, and then I hit escape. Boom. And I get that 10 times, because any command, including these commands up here for doing inserting and whatnot, uh, will be repeated. So now I can hit 10 and DD, and they all go away. To paste things, it's the letter P, a lowercase p, pastes below the current line, and a capital P pastes above the current line. Um, if you want to replace just a single character, capital R, once again, replaces, lets you just type and type and type. If I only want to replace a single character, I can hit an R and then follow it by the character I want to replace it with. So there I hit RZ. I can change it back with RY. R replace a single character. Um, capital J does an operation called a join where it takes the line below and brings it up to the end of the current line. So I just hit JJ and that pulls it all up together onto the same line there. You can search the same way that you did in uh, less. You can use a slash and then, for example, I can search for test, and it says, well, there's that one up at the top. Uh, let's go for search for line. There's a line there. If I hit in, it goes to the next one. There's a line there. There's a line there, 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 and there, and then it will jump up back to the top if I keep going. Um, another command, so let's go ahead and type these in real quick, slash search for something in go to next search I skipped J join lines another really helpful one that I have found is a command called CW for change word so instead of saying this is a test how about we say this is oh hey I don't even have an A here um, how about I say this is an emergency? Now all I want to do is that I need to erase the word test and type stuff in in place of it. Turns out you do that type of operation a fair bit in programming and that's what makes the CW so helpful. If I do CW it deletes the current word and allows me to type in an insert mode automatically. Um, Another very helpful thing that you can do is to use a dot to repeat the last command. So if I come here and I hit a period while I'm in command mode, it will repeat the last thing that I did. Now the last thing that I did was I, I did CW and typed in an emergency. So if I do it right here, it will remove the word current and replace it with an emergency. Okay. Those, that type of functionality right there is once again the thing that makes VI very helpful for programming. Because change word is something that you do occasionally, like for example, it's you can do kind of a search and replace by let's say I wanted to, we did line earlier, uh, let's say I wanted to change all occurrences of line to ZZZ. Okay, I'll hit escape. Now if I hit in, I jump to the next one and I can hit dot and it will automatically do the change word that I had done previously. 
and I can go through the whole file uh, doing that. Now, of course, in a standard text editor, you're like, well, I would have just done a search and replace and you know, do a, a replace all. A lot of times in programming, you don't want to replace all. And in fact, you don't even want to replace everything in a certain set of text. You have to, to look at it. And so that the, the keystrokes of in to move to the next one and dot to repeat what you just did wind up being very helpful. And it's a lot faster than having to click around with, with your mouse. You might have noticed that I've been doing a fair bit of undos. I'll make a change and then I will go back and redo it. If you are in command mode, hitting U doesn't undo. Okay? And Vim has multiple undo, so you can undo back multiple times. If you wanted to, if you undid something, you're like, oops, I really wanted to keep that, a control R will do a redo okay, and repeat the stuff uh, that you have done. Okay, so, so these are just a set of the commands that I find useful that are standard. You type them into the command mode. There's also a whole slew of commands that are used that start with a colon. And in fact, I have kind of implicitly done a number of these with my with my my fingers just do them for me because I'm used to VI. Um, hopefully yours will too. If you're writing a paper in Microsoft Word, hopefully every so often your fingers just magically hit Control S to save stuff for you. Well, how would I save in VI? For that matter, how would I get out of VI? Well, turns out both of those are these colon commands. So a colon W does a write. And if you just do colon W and you hit enter, it will write the file under its the name that it had. So right now if I hit colon W, you can see it puts the name of the file here. It tells me how many lines and how many characters there are that were just written out. If you want to get out of VI, colon Q is a quit. Okay. Now, if you have made changes and they haven't been saved and you try to do colon Q, it won't work. It will, in fact, we can do that right now, colon Q. It, you can see it has this message, no write since last change, and it even tells you how to get around this. You can add a bang to override. So if I have made changes and I don't want to keep them, I can do colon Q bang to override and quit. Okay, but the bang for emphasis, you really mean that you want to do this. Uh, turns out that there every so often you will get into a file in read-only mode, and maybe it doesn't need to be read-only. Maybe you really do have the ability to write it. Uh, this is a wbang will do an override and write. You can also follow the colon w with the name of a file. So if you do colon w file name, that will save as the new name that you give it. And lastly, when you are going out, because the colon Q does not uh, like to work if you haven't saved, you can actually do a colon WQ, which will, sorry, I'm not in command mode, or I'm not in an insert mode, I was still in command mode. A colon WQ, which will do a write and quit. And that is what I do most time when I'm done. I colon WQ, and that gets me out of VI. Okay, and so, here you can see all of the different commands that are helpful inside of here. Uh, there are many, many more, and you should go look them. Feel free to go look things up. See if there are any other commands that suit you. This happens to be the set of commands that I use on a regular basis. Okay, so uh, there actually are some others. For example, the pound sign will show you a matching parentheses, or uh, or sorry, that's a percent sign. Um, and you can type in colon and a line number. I should mention that colon um, and a number not actually, so like colon five would take you to line number five. Also winds up being helpful for programming, wouldn't matter in an English paper, but it's, it's a helpful thing to be able to do uh, when you are writing programs. There are two other thing, or there's one other thing that's worth mentioning here. So right now if I hit tab and we wind up 
doing tab a fair bit uh, as we're doing programs. So right now when I hit tab, you can see that that's spaced in a fair bit. Okay. It turns out that by default tabs are eight characters long. Scala winds up be having a lot of indentation and you might want your tabs to be smaller than that. So how can you tell uh, VI to use a smaller tab size? The way you do that is you edit the .exrc file. And this .exrc file contains settings for VI or Vim and so you can tell it to set things. There are many different things that you can set. Uh, the only one that we're going to do is I'm actually going to set the tab stop just to 2. It's kind of standard Scala practice to make your indentations equal to 2. You could make them equal to something else if you, if you want, um, but 8 is definitely too big. Uh, you want them to be at, at least down to 4 uh, for, for when you're programming in Scala. And so now if I go back to this file and I hit tab, okay, now you can see that there are only two characters up here that are being skipped because that is the new tab stop. So that gives you a brief introduction to uh, VI. Uh, I guess one other thing that's worth noting, this extension here, the .txt, in general it doesn't necessarily matter, uh, but you might have noticed something when I edited the HTML file. And that is the fact that all of the text is in color. Uh, VI has, and, and Vim, have color coding for certain things. And so if you use a file extension that they know uh, for example, it knows that HTML is for the hypertext markup language, and so it will color code things in that in that way. We want our when we write Scala programs, we want them to be properly color coded because it makes them easier to read and it's easier to tell when you do something wrong. Uh, so it's good to use appropriate file extensions, even if they don't necessarily matter uh, when you are. For, for VI. VI really doesn't care if this file is called txt or html or uh, whatever you want. I can call this anything and VI will just edit it. However, if it has a particular format like an html file, VI can potentially color code it more intelligently if you use an appropriate extension. So, recapping, the text editor that we're going to use is VI. We use a plain text editor because programs are written as plain text. Microsoft Word is not a text editor. You should not use Microsoft Word for trying to write programs. Uh, it's, it's not happy for them, plus the autocorrect will do all types of weird things to your code. Um, when you first enter VI, you go into a command mode and you can use various keystrokes like I and A and R to go into an editing mode where you can actually type things in. Uh, there are a number of other different commands that you can use from inside of the command mode to help you uh, quickly do different operations inside of inside of there instead of having to you know directly type everything. Uh, so you should play with VI, you should edit a file or two, and try making sure that you hit escape to go back to command mode and don't use it just like an alternate version of Notepad. The more experience that you get with it, the more likely you are to, to uh, be able to use it efficiently later on.